In British India, the 255 million Hindus were in a majority. India's 92 million Muslims were concentrated in the northwest and northeast of the country. For nearly 200 years, Britain ruled over India's 380 million people. India was the centerpiece of Britain's empire, a source of money and power. The Mughals control most of India. The first time this great land has been unified in nearly 2,000 years. Lords proclaim religious tolerance. More than a hundred million people now see business and industry, science and art flourish. This just ruler leads the country to prosperity and stability. The court chronicle records that Shah Jahan brings the people abundant joy and happiness. For decades, Indians had fought to rid themselves of British rule. The independence movement had been kept in check by ruthless military force. But by 1946, everything had changed. World War II had left Britain bankrupt. August 1947. The British are quitting India nearly 200 years after they took power. One of the largest, most ethnically diverse nations in the world has been divided. One country will now become two, India and Pakistan. After Hinduism, Islam soon becomes India's second religion. It's the British leave, and there will be a democratic form of government, you see, you know. But in a democratic form of government, the Hindus will always be in a majority, and the Muslim will always be in a minority. We have no chance. Our minority will never be transformed into a majority, you know. And the Hindu majority will always remain a permanent majority. Therefore, we have no chance. It was championed principally by one man, a 70-year-old British-educated barrister, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. His Muslim League demanded the division of India into two, one country for the Hindus and Sikhs, and another for the Muslims. In March 1946, a British government delegation, the Cabinet Mission, arrived to negotiate between Congress and the League. Pandit Nehru, who calls for an Indian Republic, is accused by the League of working for domination over the Muslim minority. Jinnah did compromise on his demand for a separate Muslim state. He accepted a united India if it had weak central powers. But Nehru, a socialist and believer in a strong central state, refused any such concessions to the Muslim League. Nehru addressed a convention of Congress members. And he said that there are only two powers in the land, the British and the Congress. Then Qaeda Azam said, no, there was third party, and there's Muslims. At the 1938 Muslim League conference in Patna, Jinnah accused Congress of being only a Hindu body. The speech that Mr. Jinnah made there was a bitter attack on the Congress. So bitter that Gandhi was obliged to make a reply. Mr. Jinnah, the Muslim leader, holds fast to Pakistan and it's reported that his maximum concessions were regarded by Congress as inadequate. At any rate, the fateful conference at Simla, following the preliminary work in Delhi, has ended in failure. There are two major nations, the Hindus and Muslims. Hundred millions of Muslims cannot be characterized as a minority. Gandhi spent the first months of 1947 walking through the villages of Nokali, holding prayer meetings, trying to bring Hindus and Muslims together. Gandhi had always opposed constitutional concessions to Muslims. For many of them, he represented Hindu supremacy. Mr. Gandhi did not appeal to the Muslims, you know. He failed to win the hearts and minds of the Muslims of India, you know. The, the way he used to talk about politics and his language, his, uh, his, uh, it was foreign. It, it did not appeal to Muslims at all, you know. But he, he used to be practically, you know, naked. He used to have one arm on the shoulder of one girl, and he should have another arm on the shoulder of another. And the Hindus thought he was a saint, you know. Gandhi's dream of a united India seemed to be collapsing. The Lahore session passed a resolution demanding that areas in the northeast and northwest of India, where the Muslims were a majority, should become independent states. 
there was no sense of exhilaration or uh, or of excitement. He was he was he was reflective, reserved, quiet. Jinnah already knew from the huge number of refugees pouring into Karachi that Pakistan was being born at a price. But that night, no one foresaw the full scale of the bloodshed to come. Across the new border, in Amritsar, Sikhs and Hindus killed all the Muslims they could find. You can't imagine what atrocities were committed. Slaughtering people, raping women, killing children, uh, looting or properties and things like that. Oh, it was the greatest bestiality you could ever imagine. And on the 10th of January 1948, he began another hunger strike as a means of stopping the massacre of Muslims in India. Jinnah, now installed at Government House, addressed his people. August the 15th is the birthday of the independent and sovereign state of Pakistan. At this supreme moment, my thoughts are those. Billion fighters in our cause who readily sacrificed all they had to make it Pakistan possible. The next morning, Jinnah and his sister Fatima drove from Government House to the new Parliament for the transfer of power. The Mountbattens followed amid a final display of British pomp. Yes, we are starting. As men. And I sincerely hope that we shall remain men. Britain's departure brought glee. Partition would bring horror. And we fought for Pakistan because there was danger of denial of these human rights in this subcontinent. Kai Diazam, meaning great leader, was the title Jinnah's followers had given him. Yet at this moment of his greatest triumph, he seemed strangely aloof. I got this amazing sense of his power, of the, of the, of the potency of the man. Here is Pakistan's King Emperor, Archbishop of Canterbury, Prime Minister, Speaker, all rolled into one formidable Kadiyazam. Only voicing my sentiments, and the sentiments of millions of Muslims, then you say that Pakistan should be based on pure foundations of social justice and Islamic, Islamic socialism, not otherism. We want the division of India into Hindustan and Pakistan because that is the only practical solution. We aspire for these great ideals because of centuries of dual domination by the foreign rulers and by the caste-ridden social system. This domination continued for over 200 years until we realized that it would ultimately mean a complete extinction of Muslims individually as human beings and collectively as a nation. After all, the story of Pakistan's aesthetic struggle and its achievements is a very story of great human ideals struggling to survive in the face of all and difficulties. This is the biggest Muslim state came to be on the 15th of August, 1947. It was not merely a government which came into existence. It meant the birth of a great state and a great nation, one supplementing the other and both existing for each other. Automatic pistol and went to the prayer ground evening at 5 o'clock or five, maybe 5 minutes. He took three steps, bowed before Mahatma Gandhi and he shot him point blank three bullets. 